So I'm extending a very, very warm welcome to all of our Piano Week viewers this week, as well as those of you who are outside of our course and our online edition that's happening at the moment. I'm so excited to be talking to you about Henley's app today. It's an absolutely amazing piece of technology and I'm really thrilled to be sharing that with you. I think the most important thing that I'd like to start off with in this webinar is to say that there is absolutely no need at all to be nervous about the technology. <laughs> I know that some people approach new apps and anything new to do with technology with a little bit of nerves and trepidation, but this app is not only absolutely brilliant, it's also extremely easy to use. I'm a concert pianist, I'm certainly no tech expert, um, and I'm certainly someone who has to learn all of the technology that they come across. Um, and it, it was just so easy right from the start. So it's, it's absolutely brilliant and so easy. So I just wanted to say that first of all, for any of those viewers who might be a little bit anxious about launching into a new, a new type of technology, a new app. So it's, it's wonderful. If you'd like to follow along today to the piece that I'm going to be looking at on the app, it's Beethoven's Piano Sonata, the Pathetique, so that's the Opus 13 Sonata, and it's number eight. And I've chosen Murray Pariah's edition within the app to have a look at today. It's certainly not essential that you follow along because all the pieces on the app are, are all functioning in the same way. It's just if somebody would like to have a look at it, and it's amazing, of course, to have Murray Pariah's edition here to have a look at. Uh, so just once again, it's the Pathetique Piano Sonata by Beethoven, and it's Murray Pariah's edition, and I'll show you how you can get into that and purchase it within the app. I think it's just incredible as a concert pianist that I can log in to any Beethoven sonata and see Murray Pariah's fingerings. That, that for me is just fabulous. So onto the app itself. Um, I'm just going to screen share with you um, from my iPad just so that you can see. Just give me a few seconds to do that. Um, I'd like to show you what the app looks like so you can all download it and I will try to go slowly as well to, at this point in case you want to uh, do it along with me. So there is the screen share of the Henley Library app. That's what it looks like within the App Store. So if you want to go ahead and download that now, that would be super. But again, it's not necessary. It's so easy and so brilliant that you'll be able to follow along with it later whenever you decide you'd like to log in. All you have to do, and again, it's so simple, is to enter your um, email address and then make a password. So there's no, no difficult login uh, setup or anything like that. Just your email and create a password and then you've got an account. So it's all very, very easy. And I'll show you obviously mine in a minute and what it all looks like. If you've been given credits or some sort of coupons or vouchers, um, because that's how the app works, you can buy things using credits or coupons or Apple Pay, um, then you can actually go and easily redeem them in the Henley Library website. So I'm just going to show you that now. Again, I'm screen sharing, so I'm on Safari. So we're on Henley, and then it's hyphen library dot so you can see that at the top of my screen now. So henley-library.com. And I'm on the coupon area of the menu here. And as you can see, it just asks for your email address and then a code. Uh, so the code that you have on your credit, press send and it will go straight to the app. So that's if you've been already given some credits. Okay, so now let's go back to the Henley Library app, which you can see again. Maybe some of you have now already got it on your app store. Of course, you'll still be able to see me through this webinar, um, but only in a little box at the top of the screen because I'm going to be screen sharing for a lot of it just to show you this, this fantastic app. So here goes into the Henley library now. And there we are. I've got my Sonata up already. Uh, I just wanted to show you initially what it looks like. So you can see immediately it's brilliant print. It's extremely clear. Um, it's the Henley editions that we all know and love but right here on your device. So you can take it with you wherever you want in the world. You can have it on any device and yeah, you're good to go. I'm just going to go back actually just to the main menu for a minute, just to show you how to get into the pieces that you've got in your library, how to access your library, how to make playlists, 
um, and again it's just all really really simple so here goes you can see my screen here so this is my account and you can see down the bottom I've got 15 credits which means I can already buy some scores if I want to you can see down the bottom of the menu there that my library is selected so these are my works works that I've already bought works that I might be working on um, pieces that I might also have in the cloud they might not be in the library itself I'll come more to that later so you never lose any pieces which is fantastic and then I'm just going to click on the Henley store which is next to it so this is where you can buy all the scores that you that you want anything that you want on the Henley library um, and I can just see that I've already got some chats which I'm just going to have a quick look at because I want to keep ahead of this because I would normally be inviting questions at this point um, in a seminar if we were in a <laughs> normal setting um, Yes, so I'm going to, I can't answer all the questions, but I'll try as much as I can. Yes, you can certainly use the credits to buy scores, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, so I'll just screen share once again. Uh, there we go. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I'm down on the Henley, sto Henley store now at the bottom of the menu. And what you can see here is everything that you can buy. So it's Mozart, Schubert, Beethoven, anything that you want within that catalogue that we all know and love, and their entire library is on this app. So at the top, I'm going to just type in, let's say, Schubert. So I want to look at the Henley Library for Schubert. So, for example, the first thing we find here is the complete piano sonatas by Schubert. So I'm thinking, great, that's just what I want. So we go into it, and as you can see, it shows you the Henley Urtext edition at the top and then it actually shows you an example of what one of the pages looks like and we've actually got the lovely A minor sonata here so that's what it will look like if you want to purchase the whole book and then we come back out of it into the main menu so I if I want to buy this edition I have to spend five seven hundred and fifty credits so I've got 15 no problem we go into it I have to buy a thousand credits to buy this edition and down the bottom in the red where it says purchase a thousand credits that will then go instantly into Apple Pay. You can pay by credit card, Apple Pay, the usual way that you can on all these devices with, with any other app. So it's extremely easy, couldn't be easier. Once you've purchased them, then that Schubert is in your library forever. So it's just, uh, yeah, you can see how simple it is. So there we go. I'm going to go back now. We're on the main menu of my account again, and I'm just going to go into my library once more. So there we go. So on this page, we've got, as you can see, the Beethoven Pathétique at the top, which I'm going to be looking at today. And then, as you can see underneath, I've also got some violin sonatas and some other works there by Beethoven. But you can probably see it, they're a little bit faded. That's because I've put them in the cloud. So they're actually deleted from my library. I don't want them there at the moment because I'm going to be working on those works later on next year. So at the moment, the only thing I've got in my library is in bold, which is the Beethoven Pathetic Sonata. However, don't despair. If you accidentally delete something from your library, so in fact, I will show you that now, I'm accidentally deleting a piece that I want. I think, oh no, I haven't got the violin sonata in D major anymore. You have because you can actually bring it back from the cloud. It never deletes, it always goes into the cloud. And you can actually see the little cloud icon if you look on the, on the right-hand column, the far right there. So I'm just gonna click on that, cloud. And as you can see, it's re-downloading into the app and already it's there. So I've got the violin sonata back. So I'm going to get rid of it again, once more. It's in the cloud, ready for next time. And any annotations that I might have made on it are also still there. So it's really, really good to know that if you go into the app and accidentally press delete on something, it will always be retrievable. So you're never going to lose anything, particularly, you know, if you've got a concert and you've been working on something for months and then suddenly you accidentally delete your, all your annotations. Don't worry about it. It's all saved into the cloud. So looking at the Beethoven then in the bold at the top, the piano sonata, the pathetique, you can see there I've got an I button on the far right hand side so this is information on the edition and this is my pariah and norbert Goetsch, and it also gives you the level of difficulty according to the abrsm exams so it's really really good to know you know if you're roughly grade eight whether a sonata is going to be um you know roughly good for you or not or whether it's going to be too easy or too difficult so you can 
browse the catalogue in the Henley store and find out what pieces are good for your standard. So I, I love that, that part of it as well. And then going back again into the main menu, next to the I button that I've just pressed, you can see a series of horizontal lines and a plus mark. Now that is create a new playlist. So as you can see, I've got Piano Week Online Edition playlist, Samantha Ward, and Piano Week 2020 webinar. Now the reason they're all ticked is because this sonata is in all of those playlists. So say I have three different, different concerts coming up, post-COVID times, of course, say, and say they're in three different cities. If I am playing a slightly different program in each of those concerts, I can create three different playlists. But if I'm playing one work that repeats in each of those three concerts, it can be in each of those three playlists. So the playlist can be anything you want, and there's no limit to the number of playlists a single work can be in. So that's wonderful. And if I wanted to create another playlist, and put the sonata in that one as well. So we're going to create a fourth playlist now, create new playlist. So let's call it Henley Library. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Henley Library is fantastic. <laughs> so there we go. I have a new playlist. The Henley Library is fantastic because it is. And my Sonata is in there as well now, so it's great. So it's in four playlists, as you can see there. Um, so those playlists, as I say, can be four different concerts, or they can be four different events that are coming up, or even four lessons. So if you have four lessons with four pupils coming up, um, and you have, you know, or four different pupils, anything can be in those playlists. It's a wonderful tool. So at the top there, <clears throat> imagine that you've got lots and lots and lots and lots of concerts coming up and you've got lots of lessons and masterclasses and summer schools and courses and you've got the whole Henley library downloaded on your device. You might think, gosh, how am I going to find, you know, the, the violin sonata in D major opus 12 number one. You don't have to scroll through all your works. You can go to the top composer and then you can type in the composer, for example, Beethoven, and it will just show you the works that you've got by Beethoven. So it will sort all your works for you so that you don't have to troll through everything to find your work. So it's very, very quick. Underneath we have instrumentation. Again, if you know you're playing a violin sonata, you can type in violin and it will take you immediately to the violin and piano pieces that you have in your library. So again, there's no scrolling through lots and lots of scores. It takes you directly to the piece that you want. And as you can see here, I've only got piano solo and violin and piano, um, but immediately it's, it's, it's organized for me there. So there's no time wasted. And then underneath, Again, we've got those playlists. So we've got Henley Library is fantastic, Piano Week Online, Samantha Ward, and, and Piano Week again. So in those playlists, there isn't a limit to the number of works we can have in there. And there also isn't a limit to the number of playlists we can have, which is super. Again, if you delete anything, it's all in the cloud. So no worries if you accidentally press something that isn't correct, it will always be there in your library in the cloud and you can bring it back within five seconds. I am going to pause for one second because I can see the Q and A's going, <laughs> going very nicely at this point. Okay. Yes, uh, all the questions so far are related to what's coming up next. So I will talk about that in one second when I just show you how to annotate the scores. Um, apologies that I won't be able to answer every single question today, but I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. So we're back now to my screen share. And I'm going to go into the actual sonata now, the pathétique. So there we are. And you might recognize the color of this page. Um, this is the, the typical Henley color that, that I love because uh, for me, it's really easy on the eyes, even though it's on an app. Uh, it's just very, very gentle. And, you know, if I'm practicing late at night or teaching, you know, back to back a number of hours, my eyes are not going to get tired with this coloring. I, I really like it. So it's extremely clear on the page and the menu is the easiest thing to understand. So I'm going to tap just in the middle of the page. So I'm tapping in the middle of the page. And as you can see, the menu is coming up and down at the top. So it's on and off, on and off the menu, tapping in the middle of the page. And I'm going to show you the features of the menu in a minute. When you're tapping in the middle of the page to get your menu, just make sure you're not tapping left or right because that's going to take you into the next page. So the page turn is just a tap simply on the left or the right of the screen. So again, brilliant. You know, if you're just practicing away, you can easily just tap. There are no page turns or anything. It's, it's so easy. 
Another very, very, very quick way of getting further on in the piece, so say you're practicing a, a particular section of the first movement and you want to jump to the third, you can get there in a flash. Down the bottom right hand side of the screen that you're looking at at the moment, you can see a one point, then one hyphen ten. This is an index essentially. So I'm going to click on it and let's say I want to jump to movement three. So there we go, movement three. And I want to look at bar 60 within movement three. So there we go, I'm there already. So it takes just a few seconds. So I don't have to keep pressing right, 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 right to get there. I just do that and it's so easy. And then say I want to go to the first bar of movement two, it's done already, I'm already there. So I'm in movement two and maybe I want to work through. So I'm going to tap right and tap right and tap right. And then I want to start the third movement and it's there. So I've practiced the beginning of the third movement and I want to get back to the first movement right at the beginning and there we are. So it's less than five seconds to jump around this piece. So I love this. I mean, I've already done a lot of work on this, on this app using the scores. So now I'd like to show you, I'm tapping in the center of the screen again, <coughs> excuse me. I'd like to show you the top menu. So on the left hand side, it shows you what you're playing, it shows you the piece, the opus number. And then on the top right of the menu, you can see this little pen sign. Now this is for editing the score and annotating yourself. So I'm going to press it and you'll see this menu that comes up. So for instance, I'm sure you're all aware of how smartphones work and how editing photos and things like that works in a very simple way on iPhones, you know, how you can draw over photos. So it's the same kind of idea here. It's extremely easy. So look at the pens across the top of the screen there. And we've got, you know, varying degrees of, of ink thickness there. So it depends on how thick you want your text to be on the score. So I'm going to choose a thin ink for now. You'll have to forgive me, my handwriting's not the best. Um, so I'm going to use a thin ink and I'm going to write a few notes to myself because I've just been practicing this piece and it's been going okay, but a few things can be better. So I'm not going to choose the purple ink, which is um, selected. I'm going to choose the red ink. And I'm going to say here, right hand, good. See what I mean about my handwriting. Um, and probably I wouldn't be writing that to myself anyway, but this is just a demo. Um, I'm going to rub it out because actually my teachers come along and said, actually, your right hand's not very good. And I'm using the eraser button there, which is just a simple press on where you've written. If I want to make it neater, I can press the text button, which is probably better in, in uh, yeah, for me because my handwriting's uh, interesting. So I'm going to type it instead. So it'll be much neater on my score. So down the bottom, it says tap anywhere to add text. So I've got the text button highlighted at the top and then you can just click anywhere. So let's go here. I'm going to say left hand. Not so good. Better luck tomorrow. <laughs> so there it is. And of course, I'm, I'm playing around with it a little bit now, but of course you can write anything on there, any kind of notes you like. And the text, of course, is, is really, really, really clear for you to see. Um, I'm going to click the arrow button back. So that removes what I've just written. Um, and now I'm going to show you the highlights. So again, it's at the top. So this is for if you know if you're struggling with a section or you want to just put a big ring around an area that you're not quite mastering. Um, I'm going to click the yellow ink at the top for this. You can see it's now ticked. Uh, and the highlight button is ticked. And I'm going to put a big ring around that because I'm having some serious issues with counting in the first bar. So that's very clear. And just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to just, just get rid of that for, for later on. But um, as you can see, you can annotate anything you want. And then down the bottom, we've got drag the symbols into the score. So you can see the symbols on the black pane just down the bottom of the screen there. So again, if your handwriting is not very neat uh, or if you haven't got an Apple Pencil or you know you want it to be very, very neat and very professional looking and say you're going to be reading off it for a concert and you don't want my scrawling handwriting all over your score, um, you can use their um, icons down the bottom, which are extremely neat and they make it really look professional. Actually, these are matching um, the addition. So anything that you drag into the score looks exactly the same as what's already there. So it's really, really neat. 
So let's say I want to add a mezzo forte into my score because I'm not really getting it right and that's what my teacher perhaps has said or that's what I'm preparing for a concert. Uh, I'm going to take MF down the bottom and as you can see I'm dragging the MF up, up and down the score like this so you can actually put it where any way, any way you want. So I'm just going to put it there which is perhaps a little random but just for the purposes of demonstration. Um, and then let's say I'm, I'm getting some fingering wrong and I don't want to write it in because my handwriting is not neat enough. So I'm going to drag a finger five from the bottom there. So as you can see, there's a five being dragged up and down the screen there again. And you can place it anywhere. As you can see, I'm playing around with it here. So you can literally just drop it anywhere. So I'm putting it there. It's very faint at the moment because I've chosen a faint ink, but you can make it any color. And again, it's just a sort of neater way of annotating without writing on the score. And if you don't want text necessarily, you can use their, their brilliant add-ons at the bottom. Just scrolling through those add-ons then, um, what I think is fantastic is that, you know, whatever instrument you're playing, there'll be something there, everything there, in fact, for every instrument you need. So bowings, for instance, you can see there. I know this isn't a violin piece, but I'm just going to show you the down bow, which again, I'm dragging. I'm dragging, I'm dragging, and it can go anywhere. So I've just put it over the first chord. So if you're a string player, you can put all your bowings in. Orchestral players can annotate all their scores with all the bowings. And I'll show you later that you can then share all the scores with your annotations on them um, to anyone you like. So as I say, you can see why this is the, the best app I think I've ever used. It's, it's incredible. If you want to learn about harmony, you can go down the bottom as well. You can, you know, chord four, for instance. Again, you can place that anywhere. Um, I just put it uh, on a random place on the score just for purposes of demonstration. But, you know, you can use this to teach your pupils about harmony, about chord progressions, and, and place these Roman numerals under any part of the score. So, yes, that's another brilliant feature. We've got things like mutes and we've got arco and pits down there, different clefs. So say that you're struggling with a clef and you're you're playing in the wrong clef, for instance. So it's supposed to be treble clef and you've forgotten and you're still playing in the bass clef, for example, in the left hand. You can remind yourself. So I'm just going to drag the bass clef again. You can put it anywhere, anywhere on the score at all. There's the bass clef at the top. We can change color. We can do a purple treble clef and you can put it anywhere. Um, so, yes. Oh. Sorry, don't do that. Um, you can put the treble clef anywhere you like um, within any of the music. And you can put it even if it doesn't look so neat um, in terms of their actual edition. So even if you're squeezing it in somewhere, it will still allow you to put it in wherever you want. And just to, just to show you just the last few there, we have pedal markings. We have left hand, right hand in case you're you know, going, going over one hand with the other. We have trills and say you're forgetting a... A flat somewhere or a sharp, you can easily input those as well. They're all down the bottom. Simple, just hold it and drag it into the score. So it, it just could not be easier. So there we go. Um, I think I've shown you the main features of this of the menu, the annotation. You can do anything there. Um, I have many, 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 many questions on the Q&A. So I'm just going to check a few because I, I can't be, oh dear, just talking, talking, talking without answering any questions. <clears throat> Does it turn pages automatically? Yes, absolutely, yes. Um, again, I'll just screen share. Uh, so yes, I appreciate that you can only see my screen, but if I just get out of this menu, I'm, I'm clicking, so I'm just touching it right, 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 right. I'm literally just touching it. I think you can probably see me there, just, just touching it, and it's going from one page to the other, so it, it couldn't be easier. You don't have to swipe or scroll or anything. It just It's just a tap and it's done. So fantastic piece of software. Back into that pen icon at the top of the menu then. Um, you can see on the top left-hand side of this menu now that it looks as though there are three squares on top of each other. So I'm going to go into that. I've just pressed it and that's score annotations. And it says at the bottom, add new annotation layer. So obviously the annotation I've just done of this score, I can save it as whatever I, I like. Um, but you can also then go back to it, add a few other things, erase everything I've just done and, and write new things in, change all the fingerings, add pedal, anything, and then save it as a new annotation. And don't worry, because whatever you've done before is, is also saved and again, everything's in the cloud. So it's wonderful. So you can have layers and layers and layers of annotations on one single piece. So let's say this, this Beethoven Pathetique Sonata, I'm playing it for a concert and I'm about to teach it. 
So for the teaching purposes, I can write fingers in for the students and maybe some helpful practice notes for them. And I can save that as an annotation layer and then send it. Actually on this, on this screen now, you can see the arrows, that typical send button. You can send it anywhere. You can send email, messages, WhatsApp, anything on there, Dropbox, you name it. So you can send it to your pupil and then they've got your markings. Then you can work on the same piece for yourself for a concert. So say I'm playing it next week and I don't necessarily want all the notes that I've sent to my pupil. I can then save a separate layer, essentially, of this piece. So it's, it's really fantastic. So in fact, you could have 10 different versions of the pathetic saved in your library, depending on who and where they're going to. So I'll just show you how easy it is. Again, I've got my, my piano week. So add new annotation layer. So Henley library. So create. There it is, we go into it, there we go, Henley Library. So this Pathetic Sonata is now saved in the Henley Library. Again, if you accidentally delete it, or if the person you send it to accidentally deletes it, it's going to be in the cloud and it will be saved here as well unless you delete it from this menu. So I hope you're all enjoying this so far. I mean, for me, it's just remarkable what you can do with this technology, it's, it's incredible. So we've dealt with the, the annotation part of this piece. So now I'm going to go to the next icon on the menu, which is again, the horizontal lines and the plus sign above it. So I'm just doing that now. So this is where the playlists are. So I showed you this before in the first page of my library where the playlists are and, and it's very easily accessible from the home page. They're also here. So if you're mid through, midway through working on this piece and you think, hmm, I haven't saved it to where I want it, you don't have to go back to the first page of your library. You can do it here. So you can add it or you can create a new playlist, um, anything you want directly from here. And as you can see, uh, this is already saved in the Henley Library is Fantastic folder and all the Piano Week ones as well. So it's already there. So it's, it's backup after backup after backup, really. And it's, it's just great and it's so well organized. Uh, the next thing I would like to show you is the, is the next icon on that top menu. So the top right hand corner again. It's the icon that looks a bit like a book, which I've just pressed now. So in the preface, which I, I really like this, because you know how in, in the physical copies of the scores, we always have a preface. And I really like this because it's so clear. Um, and again, it's, it's, the, it's the ones that have been done recently by Murray Pariah and Norbert Goetz. And it's not too long. It's very well written. It's just really interesting information about the piece. So you really want to go in and look at it because it's, it's so appealing to the eye and to learn all about this particular edition with my pariah's fingerings. Back into that menu then. There's also an about this edition page. Again, it's only one page long this. Um, and it's just, just a few notes if you're interested in reading about it. Again, not too long. It's not information overload in any way. It's very, very clear, very concise, and doesn't take too long to read. It's just short, sharp tips on the pieces and, and how they came about. Back into the menu, uh, we have sources, again, just in case you'd like a little bit of info. And the last one on that menu is score comments. So if you turn that on, you actually get to hear all, all about, you know, for example, in the original edition, B flat was here in bar 46, but it wasn't in the, in the next edition and things like that. You know, when you find these little discrepancies in the scores, everything is explained if you turn on score comments. So anything that you might be unsure of, if you're working against the autograph, for instance, um, everything is explained if you turn on the score comments in every single work in the library. So the next icon at the top of that right hand menu it looks like a crotchet with a finger three on it. These are score fingerings. Now, as I said, this is Maury Pariah's edition. And again, I just, I just find it incredible that we can find all of his fingerings on this work. It's, it's just incredible. And all the other Beethoven sonatas as well. Um, if you are a professional pianist, and if you'd rather start with a blank score and you don't want any help with the fingerings, you can turn them off. So there we go, no fingerings. It's now a totally blank score. So I will show you that going through. There are no fingers anywhere. So it's all totally blank. And then you might think, gosh, I shouldn't have done that. I really wanted to see what my pariah writes in terms of fingerings on page three of the third movement. Don't worry, you go straight back into the fingering menu, 
select my pariah again and it's all back so there we go my pariah's fingerings once again and don't forget that within the editing the annotation part of the menu as well you can also adjust his fingering if you want to not that i'm suggesting that you should because i'm sure it's all wonderful but if you wanted to change something you can also do that of course you can annotate and edit yourself without removing all of his fingerings but just altering a few if, if you feel you need to and then you can see the last icon at the top there of that top right hand corner of the menu it looks like a settings button um, the the sort of wheel so i'm just clicking on that now the first thing it shows there is the background now i was talking about this a little bit before i really like this slightly slightly darker background so it's not pure white um, just for me, it's a little easier on the eye. Um, I just find it a little easier to read. But if you want pure white as well, it's there. You can just see the difference. So that's the standard pure white. And this is a slightly faded one, which is a very typical Henley look. And I love it. I think it's really lovely to read. Underneath, we've got printed layout and custom layout. So at the moment, we're on printed layout. This is custom layout, so it's fewer staves to the page. Um, some people prefer that. I, I don't. I prefer the other way just because it's fewer um, turns, but uh, you can have it either way. So let's go back onto printed layout for a minute. So one of the best features, I think, of this amazing app is what happens in the print section. So when you go to print this, say you've got all your annotations and you want to print it out to play, you know, physically with a physical piece of paper, click the print icon. And let's say we want to print, I don't know, the second movement only. So we print that movement. And then this is the incredible thing, I think. If you do the, the zoom with, with two fingers in the middle of this page here where the music is, it takes you into a PDF. Now that's wonderful. So here we go. And there you have a PDF of the second movement with the, with the other pages down the bottom here. With that, of course, you can send that anywhere. So you now have, you now have a fully annotated, if you want, if you've done it, um, score of this sonata and you can send it to whoever you want. So at the top right hand corner, again, we've got the send button so again it can be sent to Dropbox or it can be saved in your files Acrobat um, messaging WhatsApp Facebook it can all be sent via that icon at the top um, I can't open that at the moment just for privacy reasons but um, I'm sure you all know how that works and it's just so easy to send that off to whoever wants to see it again if you've done annotations you know orchestral players have done bowings for instance they can send it to the rest of their section so all the violinists have the same bowings in just a click of a button so a really wonderful feature the the pdf there so i'm just going to go out with the print and just at the bottom there there's a help button of that same menu so again we're in the settings menu down the bottom and it says help so if if you're just not sure at any point about some sort of aspect of this app everything is there clearly explained using your Henley score welcome to the digital score and it's basically going through everything i'm going through today in a very 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 simple way and again they've got screenshots of an ipad there and it's all virtual so it shows you how to use it so if at any point you think gosh i can't remember how to do that it's all in the help button um, in the settings menu so down the bottom now, I have shown you already the, the jumping to movements uh, menu, uh, which is here again, I'll just show you. So jump to movement and jump to bar number. Um, I'll just show you that once more because it's fantastic. So we're going to third movement bar 20. There we are. And then we can go right and right and left and back to the start. And then just similar to a, to a smartphone or any kind of device that you might use in the middle there, we've got those little dots. I'm sure you've all seen those before. So that's just a scroll bar, essentially. So you can click any movement. So if you know what page the, the bar number is that you want to work on, you can find it there as well. So yes, if you know that you're needing to work on page 10 because you did page 9 yesterday, uh, you can easily jump to it there. Um, I'm just going to stop screen sharing for a moment because I'm aware that questions are coming in and I'd like to be interactive if at all possible. Oh gosh, there are many, many, many. <laughs> okay. Does it scroll automatically? Yes. Um, 
Does it support any page turning devices? Yes, you can attach a Bluetooth pedal to this. Yeah, so you can practice whilst uh, turning the pages without manually doing it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, could I show the, yes, of course, the, the PDF again. Yep, yeah, sure. Let me just screen share once more. I do apologize that I'm not managing to get through all the questions, but I'll, I'll do as many as I can. Okay, so back into it, tapping the main um, screen once more in the center to get to the settings menu at the top there. So we're going into print. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter what we're going to print at the moment. So let's say first movement, let's print first movement. And then you can see the music in the center of, this, of the page there. You need to do the, the zoom, the photo zoom action with your fingers, you know, this one, one and two out. So you're zooming in on the page and that's the PDF there already. So brilliant, each page is a PDF so you can send it to whoever you want. Um, you just have to go into the print icon first. Um, and it shows you all the pages down here as well. So you've got the whole sonata in PDF. And of course, again, it can be your annotations. So you've gone into the pen icon, you've changed the fingering, you've done some pedaling, you've added some annotations and some text and some practice notes. And then that can be either printed in physical form or converted to PDF. Or again, you can just have plain my pariahs fingerings and annotations, and you can just print that without any of your annotations as well. You just have to buy it in the in the store again. Okay, so just down down the bottom of the menu again, um, I would just like to show you the the M word, which we all know and love. Of course, I'm not being sarcastic at all when I'm talking about the metronome. Uh, so we have a metronome <laughs> app here within the app. Um, this is so that you don't have to have a physical metronome. Um, nor do you have to have a second device to use a metronome so you can be practicing away. So there's really no excuse not to use that metronome. Uh, it's right there. Um, so you can use it simultaneously. You can be playing along and use the metronome. Now, I'm not going to put the volume on today if I can help it, uh, because I'm sure none of you want to hear a metronome going on in the middle of a webinar, particularly for those people who are on Piano Week and who've been made to use the metronome today. So we won't do that. But I am going to click on it and show you what happens. Um, so there we go. It's just like a standard metronome. It goes up very far to 208, I believe. Yes. Um, and again, you can check your speeds. You know, what's Allegro, what's Presto, what's Prestissimo there, what's Adagio. Um, you can set your volume control um, any speed you like and then just press start. So it's, it's now going, but I haven't got the volume on. And stop. And again, you can just practice along with it. And... Um, even if you if you can't see the score, because the metronome icon icon is up and you can't see the bottom line here, for instance, if it's going and the volume's on and you then just click to get rid of it like that, it will still flash down the bottom. So don't worry, you can still keep that metronome going. <laughs> so I'll just go into that again. You put the metronome on, you press start and then stop and it would still be going even if the icon is not actually physically showing so it's not covering the music but it will still flash at the bottom <laughs> so yes as i say no excuse not to practice with that metronome um and then next to it there's a little microphone icon there and so i'm just going to go into that and show you so you can record anything that you're playing um and it, it just works through your device so say you wanted to send, let's say, the left hand of something to a pupil because you want them to play along the right hand with it. And say they're just starting to learn it, so you're going to make it slow for now. You can see here, I'm actually just toggling back and forth there. There's a speed toggle there. So if the pupil receives a fairly slow recording from you and then decides that, you know, in a week's time, he's got a little bit, little bit more fluent with it and he can be a bit more comfortable now and you want to just push that tempo a little bit he can still play your recording at let's say 1.5 of the original speed and play along with it so that's a really fantastic feature for someone who's learning so a teacher can record anything basically send it to anyone again with the arrow app that you can see there um, and it's just a really really good way of, of learning um, especially to use this with, with pupils. I've done it quite a lot already and it's a really, really useful tool. Um, so you can see my library. I've only got two things in there at the moment, Piano Week Festival and Piano Week Online. So I'm just going to press start a new recording. 
So let's say download Henley Library today. <laughs> it's recording as you can see. So down the bottom, there's a red icon and it's ready to be stopped whenever I finish. So right now I could be just playing the left hand, for instance. So left hand, left hand, left hand, and then I want to stop. And it's there. And as you can see at the top, it's already saved. I don't have to do anything. Just download Henley Library and it's 13 seconds. <laughs> and I can send that to whoever I want. Um, so again, uh, just a, a really, really valuable tool. Again, there's no limit on how long the recording is. So if you want to just play it yourself because you want to see how you're getting on with a particular piece, really easy. You just play um, into the recording and that's it. It's there, saved forever. Again, if you accidentally delete it, it's in your iCloud um, and you can track your progress. So you can name and date them, for instance. So this is the recording on Monday night and this next one's on Wednesday of a particular piece. <clears throat> so a really, really fantastic app all round um, and just so many wonderful features within it. And um, I think you'll all agree with me that the metronome is the best. No, I'm, no, I'm joking. Um, so I'm going to just whiz back quickly into the into the webinar and stop sharing my screen because I, there are loads and loads and loads of questions here. I'm sorry. Ah. Um, <clears throat> could I go through the annotations once more? Yes, of course. Uh, let me just share my screen once more. So yes, there are lots of things going on here. Okay, so again, I'm tapping the center of my screen. And I'm going to the top right hand corner menu and I'm going into the pen icon. So let's say, for instance, I've I've put a couple of fingers in. There we go. I'm dragging a two and maybe I'm dragging a, a oh, sorry, I'm dragging a, a P in somewhere because my dynamics are not so good. So there we go. And maybe I'm writing a five somewhere else. Um, I need to adjust some fingering to somewhere random. So this is my annotator score of the day. So the annotation is the top left hand corner. So imagine I've got loads of work done today and I want to save it. It's those three squares on top of each other. So I go into that and let's say I want to save it into the Henley library. It's already clicked, so it will be in there for later on. And again, you know, you go in, you accidentally delete something out of there. It will be there in the cloud later. Um, nothing will ever be erased. The same goes, and I should make this comment now, the same goes for um, if you you want to make further further annotations on top of something that's already been deleted and then you resave it and then delete that so you've deleted the file twice both annotations will be in the cloud so you've made one annotation you've deleted it accidentally it's in the cloud you've then gone back into that annotation because you found it annotated it further <clears throat> on top of your first annotation and then deleted that both will be in the cloud so there's no worry at all about ever losing anything <coughs> excuse me Another thing to be aware of, which is really important, is that if you're working somewhere, let's say on a train or a plane, and you don't have internet, uh, you don't need to worry because even though it's not going to be saved anywhere, the next time you log on, it will be saved, which is a really fantastic and an absolute lifesaver. So you're not going to lose anything ever. Anytime you next log on to Wi-Fi or data, your work from whichever session was done without internet will be there. So another brilliant feature. I'm just going to stop sharing again a second and have a look at some of the Q and A's. <laughs> Let's have a look. Can you, oh yes. Can you show us some Mozart? Yes, of course. Okay. Sharing the screen once more. <clears throat> okay. So it's actually a good way in which to show you this again. So that's my library again, showing there. And I've worked on the Beethoven Pathetique. Great. As you can see down the left-hand side, on the, on the bottom, I've got 15 credits. I go into the Henley store and I think, hmm, what am I going to use my credits for? Or what score do I want to next buy? So I'm going to type in Mozart. Let's just, let's just say Mozart and then we can see a whole cross-section of what we've got. So as you can see, complete piano sonatas, complete violin sonatas, flute concertos, horn concertos, string quartets. Let's let's have a look at the string quartets just, just for something different. So again, you can see the Henley score and what it would look like physically at the top there and what it does look like on the app. And then interestingly, you've got full score 
violin one, violin two, viola, cello. So you can actually download each individual instrument or you can download the whole thing. So let's just have a quick look at the demo of the whole score and there it is, the quartet. So that's fantastic. And then violin one, again, we've got our little demo. And don't forget within the app, if you were to buy the violin part, you can then add all the bowings and all the phrasing and anything that you want in there, always to any work. And again, there's a, there's a way of buying just violin one or violin one plus full score. It shows you how many credits, so I would need to buy with 140 credits. Immediately that screen comes up, buy the credits, and then you have that work in your library and it's, it's instantaneous, so it's, it's just immediate. It's brilliant. Um, somebody also asked in the, in the Q&A, um, what happens if you buy a single work, like a one Schubert Sonata, and then you want to buy the entire collection? Um, it does remember, so it knows what you've bought. Uh, so if you buy one Schubert Sonata and then you want to buy the complete set, um, it remembers the one you've bought and you don't re-buy that one, so it deducts it from the price. And also you don't get a second copy of that Sonata. So it's, uh, as I say, it's probably the best app I've ever seen and it's, it's absolutely remarkable. And there is Mari Pariah at the top there. Um, absolutely incredible to have his version of the Beethoven Sonatas, his edition of them. Um, absolutely remarkable. I'm working through them myself at the moment. Um, I will just stop the screen share in a second. <laughs> One more question. Um, can you use Apple Pencil? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, anything that you would use on a normal iPad on any device, um, you can use here. So yes, it's, it's compatible with Apple Pencil or, or just tapping with your finger as well. Anything works in, in just the usual way. Yes, any more? Let's have a quick look. Um, can you get other editions apart from Mario Pariah? Yes, certainly. Um, Mario Pariah is just the, the new edition of the Beethoven Sonatas, but all the others are on there as well. Yes, it's the full comprehensive library, so you can just have hours of fun scrolling through their library. Um, it's the one that's um, up on the screen now. In fact, I'm going to put it back because it's great to see it. Um, the Henley Store. There we go. Um, I'm just scrolling back there. You can also see Kissin, for instance. We've got Kissin, the composer. So his works um, are on the Henle Library app as well. Um, they, these are very recent. And there's Pariah, the Beethoven Piano Sonatas. So all sorts of things here. It's remarkable. Browse the Henle store. You can see how easy it is underneath. You can browse by composer, instrumentation, or period. And then again, just either pay by Apple Pay, however you want to, basically, or with your credits. I would like to go back into the credits just once more because I've had a question about that as well. Uh, so I'll just stop the screen share for a moment just to see what the question was. Can you show me how to input the credit code again? Yes, sure. Okay, so I'm just sharing the screen once more. <clears throat> so imagine you have received then vouchers for the Henley Library. So you have got a code, it's a 16 digit code to buy scores. It's like a voucher like you would get in a, in a supermarket or any other store. So I'm just coming out of it and I'm going into Safari once more. So it's Henley hyphen library dot com. You can see it there at the top. And then I'm in the coupons area. You can see coupons there. This is obviously after you've already got an account from the from the Henley app which is again, very easy. Remember, it's just an email address and a password and then you're in. So here you enter your code. Have you received a gift card or coupon? Enter the email address, enter your code, press send. When you next go into the app, your credit's there. So you can buy anything you like. Let me just see once more because the questions are still coming in. This is great. I'm so happy that you're all having good fun with this webinar. Yes, I'm sorry that you can't see all the questions. <laughs> That's for the, the panelists. Um, yes, and of course, we've had somebody just say an amazing app indeed. Yes, it is. Um, it's an unbelievable app. It's, it's really incredible. And I would like to stress that actually once more, just before I end, that, you know, I'm, I'm really not a techie person. I have to learn everything. And I was quite nervous as well when I was learning the app for this seminar before I got to know it. And then I had the privilege of speaking to someone who helped develop it. Um, and I was just immediately baffled by how incredible it was. And everybody should just go and download it immediately and use it. 
Um, and just how easy it was. I, I was immediately at ease and relaxed as soon as I heard about it. Um, there is not a single thing that's difficult to use. And again, you know, if you get stuck at any point, there's a help section there and everything downloads to the cloud. So it really can't go wrong in any way. It's just fabulous. So I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone for listening to me today. I hope you're all going to go now and buy lots of wonderful scores on the Henley Library app. Um, please do get in touch if you have any more questions. Just very briefly, this is us. We are Piano Week Fest. I will just uh, share my screen with you once more. Um, any questions, and I can always direct any questions as well, of course, to um, Henley in Munich if I can't answer them for any reason. Um, they are absolutely wonderful and will be very willing to help, I'm sure. And as you can see on the Piano Week page, our homepage is currently advertising this webinar. webinar. Um, so please get in touch if you have any questions about today's webinar and just back to the Henley Library app uh, webpage once more. Thank you so much for listening. You've been a wonderful audience and goodbye. <laughs>